Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and before I get into the topic for today I want to talk about a couple things I got in the mail. So we wonder why healthcare is so expensive in the United States of America. So um, I have, you know, we all have to have insurance and even before there was a mandate I made sure I had health insurance but uh, my health insurance company Medical Mutual is very aggressive about getting me to do things. I get these little reminders in the mail. So here's what this one says. You have to admit there's something very satisfying about checking items off your list. I agree with that. There's a feeling of accomplishment, a sense of pride, but checking items off one list in particular can also prevent life-threatening conditions that could decrease your quality of life. We're talking about a list of important health screenings. And then it has Pamela's Here's to My Health To-Do List, personalized for me. And what they recommend is colorectal cancer screening, helps find cancer early before it develops. Talk to your doctor about which test is right for you. And then, of course, mammogram. The best method to screen for breast cancer in its earliest stage is when it's easiest to treat. Absolutely a scientific lie. Now, there's a part of me that wants to sit down and write a very long letter to Nancy Martin. See, it has the personal touch. Nancy is very concerned about my health, you know. And uh, show her the error of her ways, but I'm not going to do that. Um, if you recently checked up one of these tests off your list, we may not have the claim yet, or you may have completed it when you were with a different insurance carrier. If this is the case, help us cross you off our follow-up list. You have to actually request that this type of information not be sent. But I'm not going to do that because it makes great information to share on video clips. This is And, and think about the people who don't know better. You probably get this and go... Boy, Medical Mutual sure does care about me. It's a personalized letter addressed to me with Pamela's Here's to My Health To-Do List. Well, while we're on the subject of screenings and cancer and everything else, this just is amazing. There's a, uh, I, they may have these in all cities, but we have this magazine called um, City Scene Columbus. And in addition, they, they tell you about the local arts festivals and all this sort of thing. So this is an article called Return of the Mac. Cheesy Shindig at Easton will once again raise money to, find to fund, fight childhood cancer. We're going to eat cheese to raise money to fight childhood cancer. So I just want to read you a couple of excerpts because this is rich. Easton Town, on October 6th, Easton Town Center hosts the second Columbus Mac and Cheese Festival with a vast array of macaroni and cheese dishes. Proceeds benefit the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center. We are, and then one of the, cha the chairman of the event says, we are one step closer to macking out cancer, all right? More than 20 restaurants and vendors from Easton and the greater Columbus area will put their best mac and cheese dishes forward at the 2017 event. At 2016's inaugural event, Easton's Kitchen Den Bar brought its bacon mac and cheese. Now there's nothing better then combining the cheese with the bacon at an event that is designed to raise money to fight childhood cancer. So they brought their bacon mac and cheese with applewood smoked bacon, four different types of cheese, and roasted tomatoes. Okay. So between this and this, I mean, no wonder sometimes it's just difficult to live in this world. But like I said, makes for great things to talk about in video clips. So, uh, and I guess that's no different than the Susan Komen pink M&Ms and the uh, pink buckets of fried chicken and the American Cancer Society, which holds Cattleman Baron's balls uh, all over the, you know, all over the country, because there's nothing like eating beef to fight cancer too, right? Okay, so since um, this is ridiculous, let's talk about cancer in a more productive way. Cancer-related fatigue, or CRF, is a common condition, particularly for patients who are undergoing chemotherapy for treatment. Exercising may sound like the last thing that would be helpful to a cancer patient because the assumption, I think, for many is that more exertion would be counterproductive if you're already tired, it would lead to worsening fatigue. But research shows otherwise. It seems that cancer patients experience less, not more, fatigue when they engage in regular physical activity. Recent presentation at the American Society of Clinical Oncology, or ASCO, included information about how exercise can actually relieve CRF and explain some of the underlying mechanisms. And this can get pretty technical, so I'm, the written article has more of the technical stuff. I'm just going to provide the overview here. 
But according to the presentation, there are many studies showing that exercise reduces CRF. In fact, one, met, one meta-analysis that was discussed included over 11,000 subjects and compared the, the effect of drugs, psychological counseling, and exercise on CRF. While drug treatment had almost no effect, the effect of exercise was quite significant, better than drugs. Exercise better, I've been saying that exercise is better than drugs for years and years, but now we know it's better than drugs for cancer patients. One of the ways in which exercise relieves CRF is that it reduces the production of a molecular signal for muscle degradation. Since muscles serve as a large reservoir of amino acids that can be used for energy production, preserving muscle with exercise can increase overall energy. In one study, 350 cancer patients who had not yet received chemotherapy were randomly assigned to two groups. One group received chemotherapy without exercise. The other group participated in a six-week program that included both resistance and aerobic exercise. Plasma proteins that are markers for uh, muscle degeneration were higher in the patients that didn't exercise. They remained stable in uh, the patients who were exercising. Now, plasma mtDNA, or mitochondrial DNA, converts energy from food into energy that can be used for the body. The presenters included data from a study showing that reductions in mtDNA were associated with the onset of CRF. A large body of evidence shows that exercise increases the production of mtDNA, improves muscle efficacy, and decreases mitochondrial reactive oxygen species. So again, it's kind of technical. I don't want to go into all the technical stuff, but I think you get the idea. Another study that they cited showed that exercise improved quality of life and also symptoms improved within just a few weeks of starting a workout program. Older cancer patients who exercised during chemotherapy had significant improvement in social, emotional, and physical domains, while those who just got the treatment and didn't exercise showed no improvement. Now, I think there are two things at play here. One is the benefit of exercise on the markers that they were measuring, and, and that's all nice and scientific. But the other is something that I don't necessarily know that you can measure, and that's the positive effect of engaging in quote-unquote normal activities during treatment. These activities can send, I think, very powerful messages to cancer patients, such as, I'm fine, I'm strong, I'm living, I'm planning to live for a long time. Exercise is something that living, strong people who want to stay on the planet for a long time do. In fact, in the book Radical Remission, Dr. Kelly Turner reported that while many of the cancer patients uh, who were survivors that she interviewed weren't exercising when they began their journey back to health and turning their health around, almost all of them began an exercise program eventually during their recovery period. Well, according to Tara Sanf, MD, Medical Director of Adult Survivorship at Yale Cancer Center, I love this quote. We need more doctors like Sarah. She says, we're at the point that we should be talking to every patient with cancer about the benefits of exercise. She went on to say that surveys show that most patients prefer a home-based exercise regime and quote, most want the recommendation to come from their oncologist. And wouldn't it be great if oncologists talk to people about not eating macaroni and cheese and exercising instead, right? Okay, that's all for today, and in fact, all for the week. As usual, I'll pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.